Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. We are waking up with watches, and everything is for sale. Reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. That's how you get in touch with me. Some of these watches have listed prices in the description below. Some are unlisted, but I have all of the numbers. And if you reach out to me at tmasso at thewatchbox.com, I have all details of boxes, papers, conditions, and the wherewithal to buy your watches or take trades. We love to build inventory. And of course, we pay cash, we pay fast, no upper limit on value paid. We will buy your entire collection. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Last year, we saw a multiplicity of new black bays from Tudor, and they charted new ground, essentially new materials we had not seen before in black bay models. And this might have been the most intriguing. Retailing for 16,800, this is the Black Bay 58 in yellow gold. 39 millimeters in diameter, olive green dial and bezel insert. It's 12.7 millimeters thick and it is yellow gold, the oldest of golds. Now being a Black Bay 58, it is more compact and it is thinner than the standard 41 or 43 millimeter Black Bays. As a result, it wears really nicely on my wrist of 16 centimeters. You can see, extremely comfortable, flat, flush, low enough that it would fit underneath the cuff, and probably even viable as a unisex watch. It does have more weight to it due to the use of yellow gold, and frankly, the timepiece has an interesting color combination that almost echoes the Panerai Bronzos, and that yellow gold looks so out of place on a sports watch that you think bronze, and it does have that same golden tone to it. It looks a lot like bronze, so if you never thought of yourself as the kind of person to wear yellow gold, this watch might cause you to think twice. The dial is absolutely gorgeous, a sort of military olive green. Of course, the watch is well-loomed, and we'll do a loom shot here. You can see the Tudor snowflake style hands, of course, a reference to the 1968 through mid 70s Tudor Submariner snowflakes. And the watch is 200 meters water resistant with a 70 hour power reserve, a chronometer certification, a crisp 120 click bezel that, truth be told, is every inch as good as Rolex, a lovely chapter ring style design for the seconds and minutes. And then this was new for last year display case backs on black bays. Now, I don't actually think that you need to see caliber 5400. It is a very technically competent, durable, and precise movement. I don't necessarily think it's beautiful. Fortunately, the watch is. Again, a chronometer, 70-hour power reserve, anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, and very shock tolerant. Now, the other big surprise last year from Tudor was the arrival of a sterling silver take on the Black Bay 58. So this is the Black Bay 58 925, named after 925 sterling silver. Same size, same thickness, 39 millimeters by 12.7. We have a taupe dial and a matching a taupe bezel insert. So you can see it's a lovely sort of anthracite gray, and it has a similar bezel action with the wonderful micro knurling that you get on these tutors. Rolex has gone to a larger knurling, and I feel like for the best grip, especially if your hand really is sweaty or wet and you're using this for a sports activity, it's a lot easier to grip the micro knurling. Now flip it over. Once again, we do have a display case back, but it's hidden under this NATO style strap. But unlike a conventional NATO, first this one is color keyed to the watch, it features a conventional buckle. So we have a buckle here and cheers, Tudor, you rendered that as well in sterling silver. It's a sort of counterweighted clevis style, and then we have these matching sterling silver strap minders. It's a really good-looking piece, and this was my favorite new Tudor of last year. It's not as visually spectacular as the yellow gold, but it's probably a more versatile watch, and all things considered, this is a watch that can be worn with more subtlety. If you want something for your office that doesn't broadcast its presence, this is a little bit more in line with the way a Rolex used to be regarded on the wrist. Upscale, but stolid, sober, and versatile. Uh, now that Rolex watches have essentially become less expensive Richard mules in terms of image and stature, Tudor is sort of taking the place, a high quality watch for a reasonable but luxury price in the sports segment. This is what Rolex used to be. Now, this is something Rolex never was, because this was also a 2021 debut, the first Black Bay in ceramics. So this is bigger. Uh, this is 41 millimeters, like the standard Black Bay. 
It has a ceramic bezel insert, and you can see when we get close to the bezel, it has a brushed pattern, a sort of imaginary sunburst radiating out from the center. Now, it is a master chronometer, and you can see there's a difference here. The standard one is officially certified as a chronometer. That is the 58. This is the 41 in ceramic, and it was the first Tudor watch to be a master chronometer, METAS certified, using the same elevated chronometer precision and durability standard used by Omega on their master chronometers. So it is the same officiating body, the Swiss Federal Institute of Metrology. This watch will meet the same standards of chronometry, shock resistance, water resistance, and anti-magnetism, as well as power reserve and winding efficiency. You can also see there are clever details, like the underside of the strap, which features the snowflake style hour hand. You can see it on the dial side. And one of the best details of this watch is the fact that the loom is not perfectly white. It's slightly off white, giving it a warmer appearance against the black base of the dial. Now the watch of course features, there's a little piece of debris on the dial. Don't worry, that's just the, di the dial. It has the same quality of bezel action here. And we have a fully blackened caliber on the reverse side. Now, this is exclusive to this model. You can see it is absolutely gorgeous, and it is a bigger movement. Tudor makes a bigger movement for the 41 and 43 millimeter black base than it does for the 39 millimeter ones. It could easily have cased up one movement in both cases, but it builds case-specific sized movements. Very impressive stuff. Now, this one also includes a deployant clasp, whereas the other two are pin buckles. We actually have three different buckles and clasps on these watches. As you can see, this is the yellow gold, this is the sterling silver, and then this is what you get on the ceramic watch. And you can see that it features a Tudor shield. That is the clamshell that locks it in place. It is blackened metal. You can see it's steel. And then it features ceramic pin snaps to maintain a tight, snappy tolerance over time. The watch does wear considerably larger than the other two, so it's broader across the wrist. This is less obvious as a unisex solution, so I wouldn't ne necessarily represent this as a watch that a woman could wear. Uh, this is a watch that I think you need a wrist of at least 14 centimeters circumference to wear, and that would be a little bit large for a woman. So this is a watch that I think is more of a male option. Uh, nevertheless, it's worth trying because with Watchbox, you get a seven day, no questions asked return policy. So you can send any watch back. If you were a lady, you try this, you think it doesn't fit, just send it back, no questions asked. That is what we believe should be the case with any watch bought online. You should have the right to return it if you don't like the way it looks. This model came out in 2017, the last time Audemars Piguet redesigned the Royal Oak chronographs. This is the 26331 IP, a combination of a titanium case and primary links with a platinum bezel and platinum intermediate links. So this is a lovely contrast in tones, truly special stuff. As you can see, the platinum is all of high polish and the titanium features a combination of polish and set Nation. The watch winds up weighing about as much as the steel model because of the combination of the very light material and the very heavy material, but the look is totally unique. It is an anthracite colored it, grand tapisserie. It is the large hobnail. It is not the petite of the jumbo or the mega of the offshore. And you can see it has lovely tone-on-tone -tone blue registers. Uh, this is the 2017 version of the chrono, which means you have a smaller sub-register for constant seconds. And then you have uh, no screw down pushers. They look like screw downs, but they're shoulders to prevent shearing. You can actually operate the chrono anytime you like. The fabrication of the bracelet is also unlike any other Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. This is special and dedicated to the unique fusion of the platinum and the titanium in terms of how the bracelet is put together and broken down for sizing. On the wrist, it's large. You really need to think of this as a 43 millimeter because that's how it wears. It's broad but flat. And as you can see, it easily slides underneath the cuff. This might be my favorite watch on the show today, and I'm not an AP fanboy, but this just works. This is an absolute aesthetic triumph, and a tough piece to find. Now, you know I started with Jeger Le Coult, and I've owned two Reversos, but not like this. This is the Reverso Grand GMT, a timepiece that features, let's get a little bit closer here, a second time zone, and then we have a day-night indicator, so you know whether that second time zone is currently pointing to day or night. You have that lovely rising sun, 
and then we have the celestial bodies in the sky. Now you have the ability here to hide that extra hand when you don't need it. And then we have a double digit date. We have the, the Grand Dot, and this is the second generation big date that JLC developed after the original one was actually given away to Longa as a sort of gift within their group. At the time, Video owned Longa, IWC, and JLC, and the executive Gunter Blumlein gifted JLC's first double-digit date to Longa, which became their design signature. JLC then went back to the well, always creative folks there. They created a new double-digit date complication and patented that. Now, the case back is blank. You can see it's buff. It's suitable for customization. Or you can leave it blank and polished, which is how I would leave it, to puzzle your friends as they wonder what in God's name you're wearing on your wrist. Now, the watch does feature a full deploying clasp. You can see this is the second generation JLC deploying clasp. It features satination media blasting inside and then polish for contrast, and it is very solid and inspires confidence on the wrist. Now, this is a big watch. It's not terribly broad, being 46 millimeters from lug to lug, but it is fairly chunky as reversos go. And you can see on my wrist of 16 centimeters, we're pushing out to the limit of what's possible. So I think you really need a 15 centimeter circumference wrist or larger to wear this watch, though it is reasonably thin and sloped to fit underneath the cuff. A great looking watch and a very handy travel timer from JLC. Okay, we have two from Grand Seiko with spectacular dials. Uh, first right here, we have the SBGM 221. Uh, this is a GMT with ivory dial and a 39.5 millimeter case. The dial is lacquered and lustrous with glittering jewel-like indices and hands that are polished and faceted manually by artisans who craft these tiny pieces all day long. The 24-hour hand is in fired blue steel. You have the ability to set that local time independently as the watch continues to tick. It is an automatic. It does have a 72-hour power reserve. The watch is beautifully made with black polish on its case, so this is done by holding the case directly against a spinning tin plate. This is what Seiko and Grand Seiko call Zaratsu polish, and it is a manual finishing methodology that leaves the surface of the case optically smooth and flawless. Very special and extremely wearable. You can see this watch is part of the Elegance Collection, which emulates the style of a 1960s Grand Seiko. So you've got this sapphire that looks like a plexiglass, and then you have this vintage-inspired case design and the 1960s Grand Seiko logo on the clasp, which is a trigger-operated single-fold deployant. Throw it on the wrist. It's a nice size. I talk about unisex options, which are becoming more and more important as more women get into watch collecting. And this is a great way to wear a watch that uh, essentially a husband and wife can purchase and share because this watch looks equally good on a wrist that is large and a wrist that is small. And you can see across my wrist, the lugs are nowhere near the edge. So this is very accommodating. Now, if you want to wear something larger, this is probably one for him or for women who like the oversized look. This is a big watch. This is the Grand Seiko Spring Drive 8 Days SBGB202, or I should say SBGD202. It's a watch that features a lovely deep and lustrous lacquer dial designed to emulate the night sky. I'm not sure how much of this is getting picked up on camera, but there is a wonderful sort of cloud of small golden deposits inside the lacquer of the dial giving it the look of endless space. Now here too, you can see the hands and the indices are beautifully crafted. And this case as well features that Zeratsu black polish. It is a stronger case design, being more massive, sheer of side with huge imposing lugs. The sapphire is also box sectioned and cambered because it's an upscale look. It's more expensive, but this watch is worth it. I've always found it curious that when you get a gold clasp on a Grand Seiko, it's made in Italy because everything else, including the shock protection and the lubricants, are made in-house at Seiko or Grand Seiko. Now you can see this watch is water resistant to 100 meters, which is unexpected on a dress style timepiece, but this movement, the 9R01, is built in the Micro Artist Studio. You can see that little bell flower engraved. That is the, the symbol of the Micro Artist Studio. Established in 2000, they have 10 to 12 workers who make a few dozen pieces per year. These watches are made in the grandest tradition of Japanese watchmaking and Valley du Jeu Swiss finish. As they went over to visit Philippe Dufour in the 2000s to examine his process and bring the best of it back to Japan to fuse with Japanese watchmaking and finishing techniques. So this is an eight-day, three-barrel spring drive movement. It has a case-back power reserve. It is manual wind. Uh, outside, 
of the Micro Artist Studio in Shiojiri. We have large snow-capped peaks, which is why we have the snow-capped peak of a volcano, a mountain range profile built into the barrel bridge. You can also see that the Anglage is a million miles wide, and it's lavished inside every jewel and screw sink. We have a handsome sat nation longitudinally across the movement, and fired blue screws. You can see just how broad those bevels are, deeply drawn. It would do Philippe Dufour proud. This is a handmade watch inside and out. And again, with only two to three dozen watches being made by micro artist each year, you're never going to see another one outside of a Grand Seiko boutique in a major market. On the wrist, it's big. I recommend a wrist no smaller than mine to wear this watch. So you're going to want a wrist of 16 centimeters circumference or larger because it is large, imposing, and fierce. It is, in terms of its size and stature on the wrist, something like a Japanese Portuguese or an oversized dress watch that wears its weight beautifully. Now, speaking of oversized, they don't come much more oversized than the JLC Master Compressor Extreme World Alarm. This is the 50-piece Tourneau Retailer Edition. You can see Tourneau, a major retailer in the U.S. at one point, now owned by Booker. They had 50 pieces made for them by JLC. The standard Master Compressor Extreme World Alarm was actually a watch I bought in Tides of Time form, and this watch is often mistaken for the Tides of Time. That was a 350-piece edition. This is 50, so this is a little scarcer. The other changes are this crown for the travel time, or I should say the world time ring. It's blue. It's anodized blue on this watch. It's black on the Tides of Time, and then the Tides of Time features uh, three separate UNESCO World Heritage Marine Sites on its city reference ring. So this is a little bit different. The reference ring's different, and the little crown for adjusting it's different. So I am in Philadelphia, so my reference city is going to be New York. You put the index down at 6 o'clock, a little different from other world timers, where you typically put the current city up at 12. Now you can see when I set the time... The World Time Reference Ring, it's 24 hours, half blue, half white, to distinguish between day and night. It moves counterclockwise, and the way this works is I simply look at the hour adjacent to the reference city, and then I read the minutes at center. So I can see right now it is 12 noon in New York, for example. I can see that it is 6 a.m. in Samoa. I can see that it is 8 o'clock at night in Moscow. I can see all of that quite easily, the world at my fingertips. Now this watch also features a quick release system, which is brilliant. Uh, so you can easily swap between straps, and critically, it accepts any generic 22 millimeter strap, so you don't need to use a proprietary strap. That's always the downfall of these quick release systems from Cartier and IWC and Hublot and Audemars Piguet. Well, the nice thing here is that now uh, you can get any custom strap you want. It could be a JLC factory strap. It can be an aftermarket strap. It does not matter. All you need to do is get the right size, 22 millimeters, and it will fit. And you just pull back and release the strap. The case is half titanium, half steel. You can see the inner case. There's a little panel where you can see it. It's made of titanium. The outer case is made of steel. And there are shock protection springs inside. When this watch debuted, along with the Master Compressor Extreme World Chrono, they had various high-impact games. Uh, basically hammer drops like you'll find in carnivals, uh, golf, tennis, all sorts of ways to test the shock resistance. And the watch reportedly can withstand up to 5,000 Gs of temporary shock. Now it's also an alarm and it has the master compressor keys, the compressor keys. Turn and now blue means it's unlocked. Turn, and now white means it's locked. I always like to say blue, you're through, so you know to lock before you jump in the water. It has 100 meters of water resistance, and you can unlock it just that easily. Now, the thing is here, we have a quick set for the date, and you can see that I have a date quick set, but then turning in the other direction, I adjust the digital system for setting the alarm, and you can easily set it to in, within three to five minutes. And it is a very loud resonant alarm as it hangs inside the case. There's an on-off switch, so you can deactivate the alarm.
a watch that is simply packed with features absolutely stuffed with functionality. So though it's a little bit bigger than 46 millimeters, I can still wear it. Again, I owned this watch for eight years. So it's a watch that you can absolutely wear if you've got a 16 centimeter circumference wrist. Shock resistant, water resistant, alarm, world time, quick release straps, this watch has it all. It's also nicely loomed. As you can see, it features a Indices, hands, and numerals inspired by the Polaris 68. So there's even a nod to JLC history here. Going big, big name that is, with Patek Philippe. Uh, the 5170G, as it was released in 2013, now the original 5170 came out in yellow gold in 2010, and not everyone loved it. It had weird combination of Roman numerals and stick indices, silver dial, yellow gold. It was a little bit frumpy, to be perfectly honest. Well, in 2013, Patek Philippe started giving us the version we wanted from the beginning. White metal, Breguet numerals, gorgeous blackened hands for chrono minutes as well as seconds, and a lovely pulsation scale, an overlooked feature. You've got a scale that's used to read the pulse. So you, can, you start the chronograph, you count to 15 pulses on your patient, and then you stop the chronograph and you can see the beats per minute. So if I started counting when I started the chronograph, when I hit 15, I stopped the chrono, my patient has a pulse rate of 90 beats per minute. That's how that works. You can see the dial is a silver matte opaline, flip it all over, caliber 29.535 petite seconde, 65 hour power reserve manually wound. You can see it features a capped column wheel with black polished cap and a lateral clutch featuring pivot jewels in Chaton. We have a rack and pawl system. It is a instantaneous jumping minute and it has a free sprung balance adjusted in six positions, equipped with a handmade overcoil and hacking seconds, a feature that still feels novel on Patek Philippe watches. Now the watch is a good size for any wrist at 39.4 millimeters in white gold with relatively short lugs. You can see on my wrist, it wears well, it wears compact, it wears elegant. It is a dress watch, there's no doubt, but it isn't quite as dressy as the original yellow gold silver dial model. You can absolutely wear this casually and many people do. You can also see from lug to lug, it is very narrow. So this is a watch suitable for him or for her and of course underneath the cuff because it's also very flat. This could easily be the Omega watch in the show. I always like to save the most spectacular watch for last. And a Romac OTA logical one, this is the USA limited edition of five, always qualifies as a special encounter. Now the watch was launched back in 2013. It won the GPHG men's complication prize, which was an absolutely spectacular victory. And from that men's complication prize, it spawned a series that ran through 2021 when it was discontinued. So this watch, 43 millimeters in yellow gold, a five piece limited edition. This one's number three. It is wound, let's see what I can show you, zoom in a little bit. It's wound using a trigger on the side. You push the trigger and it winds the barrel and you can see that the chain transfers from a wheel geared to the barrel to the snail cam fusee. You can see that the chain is entirely black polished. You can also appreciate the fact that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve sharp interior angles on the bridge bearing the fusee. This is a geared constant force device, and as the barrel drives down and its torque reduces, it pulls a larger effective lever arm on the snail cam to maintain constant amplitude on the free sprung proprietary balance that they make themselves in house. So for 46 hours, this watch maintains constant amplitude. You can see very Variable inertia bolts sit on the balance, which is of Romain Gautier's own development. So the watch is particularly shock tolerant for a dress watch. We also have wheels made in house by Romain Gautier, and you have that circle within a circle recursive design. The dial is black grand faux enamel, flawless. And you can see not only does this watch have sharp interior angles, it also has sharp outward points. And on both sides, you could see many more sharp interior angles where bevels meet on the reverse side and appreciate that the bevels are so broadly drawn, you don't even need a loop to appreciate them. There is a sapphire cap on the barrel and the barrel is lined internally with sapphire to reduce the friction of the spring so it can move and improve ultimately torque release and power reserve. There's a power reserve indicator on the reverse side 
And as you can see, many different finishes from black polish to a brushed set nation on the bridges to a media blasted set nation on the bridges, the mirrored unglage set on the bridge edges, but also in the jewel and screw sinks. And you can see a proprietary black polished screw head design is used by Romain Gautier to better torque the screws into place so they can take more torque. You set the watch using the crown at two o'clock. It is a large watch at 43 millimeters, there is no doubt, but Romain Gautier gives you more of the good stuff as this watch's larger case makes it a better frame for the masterpiece that sits within. Framed on your wrist, one wishes that it were larger so you could get more of that fine finish and visual flair, more of the visual fireworks that define this watch. Of course, Romain Gautier, through those years, 2013 to 2021, when this watch was in production, making only 50 to 60 watches a year, split over four different fundamental models, meaning not all of the 50 to 60 were the logical one, giving you a better sense of just how rare this watch is. My favorite feature, if you look very closely inside the chain, uh, there are actually pivot jewels within the links. They sit inside the links of the chain to reduce the friction. There are 26 rubies inside the chain alone. Launched in 2015, this was, at the time, one of the most sophisticated watches in the world, with a movement parts count over 770, courtesy of L0435, the latest, at the time, development of Langa's Zeitwerk jumping time. Now, the watch has the jumping time display of the Zeitwerk, but this is the Zeitwerk minute repeater, so you can see those black polished strikers on the dial make it something special, even by Zeitwerk standards. Gorgeous. What we're going to do now is we're going to set the watch to 1259. It has a wonderful quick set system that makes it an absolute pleasure and a wonderful little piece of watchmaking theater uh, to impress your friends. You rapidly set the system forward. We're going to set it to 1259. On this watch, the mainspring barrel drives the minute repeater. They didn't want to include a minute repeater slide because people have a propensity to pull those back incompletely, and when you incompletely pull a repeater slide, almost invariably you damage the movement. So by using the mainspring barrel to power the repeater, Longa doesn't have to worry about someone half charging the slide and half charging the strike barrel. The energy to execute the chime is already in before you push the button. If the watch is chiming at the time the minute would normally jump, the seconds hand will proceed past 60 and hold the displayed time that's being chimed until the chime completes, at which point it will then jump. Now you can see there's a little dot on the power reserve. You need to have wound the watch at least past that dot in order to operate the repeater. You could see that the strikers are black polished, the screws are black polished, the components of the movement feature a combination of stripes, satination, black polish such as the swan's neck fine adjustment mechanism or the cap to the escape wheel. You can see that there are one, two freehand adjusted, freehand engraved structures, uh, the cock for the escape wheel as well as the balance cock. The watch does feature hacking or stop seconds, a five position adjusted overcoil. It beats way at 18,000 vibrations per hour, which is aesthetically pleasing. It has a constant force device, a remontoir de galette, so the barrel never directly drives the escapement. It's such a powerful mainspring that it would overdrive and cause knocking. So the clever system they use is two third wheels with a hairspring sandwiched between them. And so once a minute, the energy jumps jumps straight down through this bridge, a second locking lever system unlocks, transfers the jump energy post jump into that hairspring, and then that hairspring drives the balance. And you can see it just jumped a second ago. The movement is beautifully wrought with mirrored anglage on both the steel components of the constant force device and the German silver bridges. The German silver bridges made of nickel, copper, and zinc, the copper giving them that golden hue. You could see 
just at a glance that the watch includes both black polished and fire blue screws. You get them both. You'll also appreciate the fact that there's engine turning on the base plate, and the watch includes gorgeous satination on the tops of the steel components. Very, very special. You can also see the governor for the minute repeater on the reverse side. The watch has what might be the most over-engineered clasp of all time. First, most longer watches don't include deployant clasps. Even a datograph, which is something of a flagship for them, does not come with a deployant clasp. Now, among the longer deployant clasps, not all of them feature a trigger release system. The heavier, more valuable watches, the most valuable watches, get this trigger release system. Now, there's something more, so that you never have to worry about the strap pulling out of the buckle. There is a release system in here with ceramic pin snaps that allows you to feed the strap through and then lock it into place, and then lock the buckle into place. As you can see, the watch is immaculately crafted in PT950. As large as it is, it has a platinum case, a full platinum clasp, and a dial made of sterling silver. This watch is an event. As good as it gets in the world of engineering and finish. And if you're going to buy a Longa, you get a Longa 1, a Dotograph, or a Zeitwerk of some description. This is the king of the Zeitwerks. That said, on a day when a DB28 Maxi Chrono is available, that will be the ultimate watch. It is the ultimate chronograph. Featuring the Maxi Chrono display system, this watch is 46 millimeters in diameter. They're only 12.8 millimeters thick. It features a combination of zirconium floating lugs and a rose gold center case. The lugs are spring-loaded, variable geometry, so even if your wrist is small like mine, you're still going to be able to wear this 46 millimeter watch easily. And I mentioned it's under 13 millimeters thick, and you can see that well from this angle. Now, the watch is a bullhead winder and a mono pusher and it uses the Maxi Chrono coaxial hand system uh, that's shared with the DB21 Re-Edition and the DB29 Maxi Chrono Tourbillon. Now you can see all applied Arabic numerals on the dial and then several different scales. You can see blackened hands for the hours and the minutes and then coaxial, you can see right here at center, we have coaxial chronograph seconds, coaxial chronograph minutes, up to 60, and then coaxial chronograph hours up to 24. So you have your chronograph seconds, minutes, and hours coaxial with the hands. So this is a very intuitive chronograph to read. Now Debatoon makes its own cases, dials, and movements. So the case is made by them. The lugs are almost scratch proof and ceramic. The, the dial is made by them and it has a wonderful depth to it, but they are all about movements. This is the caliber 2030 and I showed you black polished screws on the other watches, regulators, stud holders, but here you can see the entire bridge structure has been black polished and mirrored. You can also see the edges of every black polished component with that mirrored rounded anglage laid by hand. Like an El Primero, it beats away at 36,000 vibrations per hour for optimal timekeeping, and it features a balance made of silicon and white gold for reduced aerodynamic drag, maximized mass in the rim, which helps timekeeping, and also diminished effect of hot or cold on the timing of the watch. Now, in spite of all this tech and the high beat rate and the complication, it has a five-day manual wind power reserve, and it features what they call the absolute clutch. So the watch includes not one, not two, but three column wheels. Three column wheels. It features a vertical clutch for the seconds display, or a vertical clutch-like system that has no play. It features an oscillating pinion for the minutes display, and then a conventional lateral clutch for the hours, uh, granting optimum engagement, drive, and efficiency to each of those time-telling organs. It is incredible, and it's one of the watches that shapes my view of Debatoon as my favorite brand. They don't do anything with half measures. Even the buckle features the same combination of rose gold and zirconium used on the case. Guys, reach out to me, T Masso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of any watch you see here.